All right, so we're going to begin our fifth unit, which is triangle applications with right triangle applications. Um, so your essential question today, how do you solve an application problem involving right triangles? Right triangles is something you've covered, but we didn't really do those in applications or word problems. Remember, that's what that means. So a quick review of what you're going to need for your triangle trig ratios. You're going to need your sine, is sine of an angle is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent of an angle is opposite over adjacent. Um, we don't typically use the reciprocal identities here, but you could if you're really comfortable with them. Also, you need to know when we're talking about right triangle trig, remember this is the only time this year that we've worked in degrees. So all that time you spent changing your calculators to radians, now you're going to make sure that they're in degrees in order to do right triangle applications. Because right triangles is always used in degrees. Remember, they add up to 180. You never did radians here. So for opposite A, remember, we always call this side A. And you're going to see that show up every single unit or every single lesson in this unit. So you need to make sure that little a is opposite angle A. And opposite angle C is side little c. And opposite angle B, which in this case is the right angle, is the hypotenuse. And we're going to call that little b. Um, so make sure that you get that, that we're naming the sides the same letter as what they're opposite. That's going to be a big, big deal throughout this unit and for the formulas that we're going to use. Now, I gave you the sine cosine tangent for angle A, so in reference to this angle. However, there are two triangles in a triangle, right? Two non-right angles in a right triangle. Um, so you could do the same ratios for C, but your side lengths are going to change because opposite angle A and opposite angle C are not the same lengths, right? This is opposite angle A, while this piece is opposite angle C. And we did talk about when you're using a right triangle, we always found our ass. We said you either needed to know an angle and a side in order to find another side, or if you needed to find an angle, you needed to know two sides. All right, so let's take a look at what these look like. All right, so here's an example just like you would have seen the first two days of class. I'm giving you a side and an angle, and I'm asking you to solve the triangle. So the first thing you need to remember is that solve the triangle means to find all six pieces. It means to find side lengths A, B, and C, and to find angles A, B, and C. In this case, A is given and A is given. So in using a right triangle, and this is supposed to be marked as a right triangle, so I guess technically I know angle B as well. Um, we always talked about needing our ass in order to solve these. So if I have an angle and a side, I can find the other side, or if I have the two sides, I can find the angle, other than the right angle, because I always know that one. So in this case, I know an angle and a side, so that's going to enable me to find that missing side. So the angle I know is 68 degrees, the side is 5, and I need to know what relationship that side has to that angle, and that is opposite. So I have an angle, and I have the side opposite it, and then I need to figure out which side am I looking for. And I think in this case, I'm going to pick B first. Um, and I just picked that because it's alphabetical. So if I'm looking at 68, 5, and B, I'm looking at opposite over hypotenuse, which means I'm looking at sine. I like to solve these as proportions. So B times the sine of 68 equals 5. And then sine of 68 is just some number. So 5 divided by the sine of 68 is B. And that I can just put in the calculator, making sure that I'm in degrees and not radians, because that is 68 degrees. And I get 5.39. And there's no units on this, so I don't have to worry about feet or centimeters or anything else. So 5.39 is the value of B. Um, and you know what I could have done next, actually, was I could have found the measure of side C, or angle C, because I know that A plus B plus C are 180, or the two non-right angles, A and C, have to add up to 90. 
So if this is 68, 68 plus C is 90. So C is 22 degrees. And you should go ahead and put the degree sign on there so then I know you're talking about degrees and not radians. Okay, so I found B. I found the measure of angle C. I just put that right through there. And so the last piece I have to find is side C. Now you could use Pythagorean theorem, but I like to use right triangle trig. So in order to find side C, which is adjacent to the angle I have, 68, and I could use the 22, but since I was given the 68, I like to go back to that. I was given the 5 opposite. That means now I'm using tangent. So tangent of 68 degrees is 5 over C. Set that up as a proportion so that I can cross multiply and solve. So when I divide by the tangent of 68, I'm going to get a value for C, which is 2.02. So now I've found all three side lengths and all three angles. Now, in an application problem, you're rarely asked for all of it, but this just gives you an idea of remembering how to do it. Okay, so you know how to solve a right triangle problem. The biggest hump, the biggest hurdle in solving a right triangle application problem is finding the right triangle. So the first thing you need to do is you need to draw yourself a picture. No matter how silly that sounds, you need to draw a picture. So here we have an airplane cruising at 30,000 feet. One of the engine catches fire. Oh, there's our 30,000 feet. There's our fire, finally. And the plane begins to descend. Woo, woo, it's on fire. How far will the train plane travel before it lands? All right, so this is my triangle. This is my picture. So you see the triangle in here. Unfortunately, this problem is a little bit misleading. And we haven't talked about this since the beginning of the year, but this 7 degrees is an angle of depression. So remember, your angle of depression is from the horizontal down. This is not your 7 degrees. Your 7 degrees is right in here. So from the straight ahead, down 7 degrees. So this leads us to another problem, because this looks like it's outside of that triangle. So this was the triangle I had. This is the angle I have. So there's two different ways you can approach this. You can say you understand that these two angles are complementary. Remember, complementary angles add up to 90 degrees. So if this is 7 degrees, this is not 93 but 83 degrees. Now you have an angle inside the triangle that you saw. However, a way that's used more often is to say, well, if you know that on the left side is 30,000 degrees feet, then you know the same thing is true for the right. And there was some um, alternate interior and some stuff that told you that when you were in geometry. But I think this is probably the way I prefer to go with this. So now I have a triangle here where I have an angle, a side, and I'm asked for another side. So I'm back to ass, where I have 7 degrees, 30,000 feet, and x. 30,000 is opposite that 7. x is the hypotenuse. And so I can set up an equation that says sine of 7 degrees is 30,000 divided by x, x sine of 7 is 30,000, I divide by sine of 7 degrees, not radians, and I let the calculator tell me that it's 246,165.3, I believe we're in feet as the unit. And it should be longer than the high 30,000 feet because it's the hypotenuse. It has to be the longest leg in a right triangle. So that's how far away um, the plane will travel before it lands. Because we're talking about actual plane traveling. 
Every once in a while, you'll see a distance about, or a question about the horizontal distance it traveled. So that would be asking you about this. This is the horizontal. This is the actual distance traveled. So those are some little things you might want to keep in mind. All right, we're going to look at another example only. This time I'm going to focus more on the setup than I am on the actual how to solve it. I feel like we've been through that a couple of times now. All right, so in this example, we have John walking towards a row of trees. He guesses that the tree closest to him is about 42 feet tall, and there's another tree behind it. He thinks it's about 50 feet tall. So he's 18 feet from a first tree, and the angle of elevation he judges to be the same for each tree. So the angle from the, him to the first tree is the same as him to the top of the second tree. So I'm going to call that theta. So what he's looking for is how far apart the two trees are. So he's just looking for the distance from one tree to the other. So in order to find this, we're going to have to look at this as two separate triangles. There's one triangle here with John in the first tree. And then there's another bigger triangle out here between John and the second tree. However, what we're looking for is not really a part of either. It's the difference of the two triangles. So really we need the dif distance from John to the second tree. And then we need the distance of, and that was here, John to the first tree, which we have. It tells us that's 18. And we're going to subtract that 18, and it should leave us with the distance A that we're looking for. All right, so how are we going to find that? Well, I think that in order to solve this second triangle to find his distance to the second tree, which is all of this, I'm going to need this angle of elevation. That's what that first tree is there to help me find. So I'm going to set up my ass for the first tree. And again, I'm not taking a lot of time to get all the way through this. I'm just setting it up. If you have questions about how this is set up, you can bring those back to class. Now this one I will say a word about. In order to find an angle, remember, you're going to have to use an inverse. So inverse sine, inverse cosine, or inverse tangent. So since I'm looking for the angle, I'm going to use inverse tangent here. And it's going to tell me that that angle is 66.8 degrees. Make sure you're using inverse tan to find that angle. So now I know this angle, 66.8 degrees. I can now look at the outer triangle to find his distance from the second tree. Again, I'm going to set up ass. This time, though, I know the theta. And I'm going to call this G for the whole distance along the ground to the second tree. Again, it's a tangent. But this time, I know the angle. I'm looking for the adjacent, and I have the opposite. So when I cross multiply this time, I get 50 tangent of 66.8, and I don't have to divide anything. And I lied because I just did that backwards, didn't I? Opposite should be the 50, and the ground should be this one. So it does look like I have to divide. It helps if you pay attention to what you're doing and don't try to rush through it like I just did. So learn from my mistakes. Don't make them yourself. All right. Now when I plug this in the calculator, I get that his distance to the second tree is 23.1 feet. So if he's 23.1 feet from the second tree and 18 feet from the third, then his distance, the distance from the first to second tree is 5.1 so we had to use that nested triangle in order to find the information about both and subtract them. Here's another great example of a situation that involves two triangles, but these triangles aren't nested. So we have Betty and Johnny that decide to meet at the Washington Monument. They are approaching the monument from different directions. 
We're trying to decide if Betty has an angle of 37 degrees. So we'll call this Betty at 37 degrees. And Johnny has an angle of 48 degrees. So this is poor Johnny. We're trying to decide, oh wait, I lied. We know Betty is 200 feet away from the monument. Yards, oh my goodness, wrong unit. We're trying to decide who's going to arrive first. Well, I can tell you from looking at the angles that um, she has a smaller angle, so she's going to be further away than he is. So he should be closer than 200, which means he should arrive first. However, it says justify your answer. And justify your answer means you're going to have to show me some sort of work to prove that answer. So how do I know for sure that she's going to get there before he does? Well, I would need to really know how far he is from the monument. So I'm going to call this D. If I knew how far he was from the monument and I knew it was less than she was, then I would know he's arriving first. So I'm going to have to use the thing that they share. They share the monument. If I knew how tall the monument was, I could then jump from her triangle to his triangle. So I can use right triangle trig. I can set up an equation that says 37 equals the monument over her 200 feet away, yards away. So I'm going to cross multiply 200 times the tangent of 37 should tell me the height of the monument. So I get 150.71 yards is the height of the monument. So if this is 150.7, I can now use that in D to set up an equation for him that says that the tangent of 48 degrees equals that 150.7 opposite over D. So now when I cross multiply, I get D times the tangent of 48 equals 150.7. Divide by the tangent of 48. And I get that he is 135.7 yards away. So not only do I know that he's closer, but I could even figure out how much closer, which is actually a pretty typical question for this type of problem. Um, and so I could say, well, she is 200 minus the 135.7 that we just figured out he is. And so he is actually 64.3 yards closer to the monument than she is. So we've justified who will arrive first because we've determined how much closer he is to the monument than she is. Okay, here are your try these for this video. There are three. Um, I think they kind of go in order. So the first one should be very straightforward. The second one you're going to need a little bit better picture for. And the third one relates back to one of the examples we did. It's just an extension question. You're going to have to kind of be careful about what information is it giving you and what information do you really need, what's it asking for. So you're going to have to think about the question in that one a little bit more. So make sure you answer these in the summary document as well as write a summary. And then bring them back to class. I'll see you there.